There we go. Emmanuel, right? So we were singing about Emmanuel this morning, and we're going to talk briefly about Emmanuel for uh, the next 15 minutes or something, right? So Emmanuel does mean God with us. You guys knew that, right? Yes. Okay, so Emmanuel really does mean God with us. And we're going to talk briefly about how in the world is God with us, because y'all seen God lately? Like so I was like, yeah, so I was like, no. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, we have a really small problem. Uh, and here it is. We're going to set it off, okay? You guys are going to have three opportunities to get this right. We're going to wait to the end before we tell our answer, okay? It's going to be some plan, problem. And once you get the problem first, you're going to have a little bit of time to figure it out. Then you're going to have steps to figure it out. And then we're going to give you the chance to get a calculator to figure it out. So you have three opportunities to give me the answer to this problem right here. Oh, not, not yet, no calculator yet. Uh, It says, Behold, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated, right? Some people don't know what Emmanuel means. Like when I say hola or amigos, it means one thing in Spanish, but you translate it, it means hello, friend, you know, in English. Right? So you may, and when you uh, translate Emmanuel, it means God with us. This is very encouraging. Yeah. Okay, last week we talked about the fact that we are being kept by God. But we really don't see God, but here we are being told that God is with us. So no matter what we go, no matter what we go through, no matter what we do, we understand that God is with us. Yes. So here's a question, you know, getting ready for the study, getting ready for the sermon, and here's something that just crossed my mind. So and it might cross your mind too. If God is truly with us, then where is he? 
Where is he? He's in our heart. Okay, where is this guy? The Word. He's in the Word. Yeah, that's a good, that's a very good answer. God's in the Word because it says that the Word became what? Flesh. Flesh. So Jesus Christ is like a walking Bible. Right? So the Word is God. Uh, we have God in our heart. How do you get God? How do you get God in your heart? How do you know God's in your heart? ABC. Yeah. ABC, explain that. Except believe and confess. Except believe and confess. It's just that simple, God's in your heart. And then when God gets in your heart, then what happens? You should change. You should change. That's a big word. You should change. We talk about growth is one. Is that once you have a, a new motor, right? If we took an old car and we put a new motor in there, it should run a whole lot better. That same old motor that didn't, you couldn't get halfway down the street, now you have a new motor because you accept it, you believe, believe you can pay. The new motor gets you a vehicle, and all of a sudden you can drive from here to Atlanta. Don't worry about, can I make it? Don't worry about the vibe. Don't worry about the right. Don't worry about the, just can you, can you make it, the engine, okay? Can you make it? But we know that God is with us. That's very, very powerful. Okay? So God, you know, he's not just somewhere that we use as an analogy before. We can't just go to God's throne or his White House or whatever and say, hey, I need you to fix this problem. Hey, you know, this is going on in my life. But we can go to, the Bible calls us the body of Christ, the church, right? Yes, yes. You know, people need their light bills paid. They need to go see Jesus Christ. They pray about it. I'm going to go see the church. Mm -hmm. People struggle. I'm having a hard time. I need to go see the church. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all, some of you guys might know Daniel Baker, my childhood best friend. We, we call, we talk. Hey, y'all need any help? Well, yeah, well, I hear it's really not working. We need someone to fix that. They send a check in the mail. Yeah. Just like that. I'm going to go see the church. You know, so God should be everywhere. There's a lot of these Christians around the world, the world's large religion. We should see God in a whole lot of places. I'm looking at a lot of God right here. Yes, yes. When you lose a lot of loved ones, someone to pray, someone to call, someone to text yes. you, someone yes. to bring you some food, someone to comfort you, that's God. Yes. yes. Because we are just ambassadors for Christ. You know, we're talking about ABC, ABC, ambassadors for Christ. Just although you do not see Christ, He has us down here as the light to glorify Him. Come on. It's just that simple. Yeah. Here's this word says, because we need to shine for a reason. Once again, God is with us. But here's what our, one of our, um, this is like the scripture, the word, our foundation. Okay? Let your light so shine before men. Yes. What kind of men we want our light to shine for? All men, but what kind of let's get let's get real right now, okay? It's only a few of us in here. I mean, do we want to shine our light in front of like just the poor people? No, no. no. The, the alcoholics, the alcoholics, the drug heads, the homeless, the strippers, the killers, yeah. the one with the tattoo on your neck, the one the like West Side on it, <laughs> you know, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Right? I had a conversation with someone yesterday. Uh, so I'm my friend, my newfound friend on Facebook. If you are a friend of the lab, and you see all these crazy, so-called crazy people, you know, on your news feed, like the the lab is not friends with Westside Killer, and the lab is not friends with Drop a Like is High. The lab is not friends with you know. It's not about shining before Come on. Come on, all of us. I mean, if I brought a flashlight, how effective would it be? And it's lit. This place is already lit. If I turn the lights out, then we can really see a flashlight. So we can't get caught up in the, in the mindset like the Pharisees, you know. Uh, we don't want to impress the people who are important. We don't want to hug the people who come here in nice suits and put a whole lot of money in the offering. And hey, you come sit on the front row. Come on. Versus someone who just got high. Come on. Just got kicked out of a vehicle. Just got in front of a hotel. Just got through stripping. Hey, come on, let's hug on you and love you. Come sit right in the front row. Come on. Yeah, you might have a couple of teardrops on your eye. But just come on, because we love you, because God loves us, because we all have some teardrops. We all have done some things with God that made him cry. But we don't like everybody else to know because these are our brothers and sisters. We like to wear nice suits. And hey, I'm just as perfect as anybody else you've ever seen. But since it, we need to let our light so shine before men that they may see. Yes. Not that so we as Christians may see, but so that they. May see whoever they is, whoever they is on that campus that you know, like well, they don't have Jesus Christ, they can't have Jesus Christ. The way they carry on, the way they talk, the way they act, the way wherever at that plant, at your job, wherever you at the museum, at that school, you know, like there ain't no way they 
this is not living a lifestyle. That always down, always out. We have to be that light to shine. Come on. So they may see our moral excellence, our morals. No, I don't do that because that doesn't sit right with the God I serve. Not our moral goodness, it's just our moral excellence. You know, sometimes yeah, nobody's perfect, but we shouldn't be slipping up more than we're getting it right. So that's not really excellent, okay? And it says, and, and you're praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds. What's something that's praiseworthy? Something that deserves a high five. Something that needs to be put in the newspaper. Something that needs to be talked about in a good way. Something that is worthy of being broadcast on Facebook or over the phone or text me. These are the things that we people should see when you donate, when you give, okay? Praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds. And then they should recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Yes. Yes. So when we say Emmanuel, God is with us, people are looking at the God that's in us. Yes. That's right. And the only way they can see God in us is through our more excellence through our praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds, and that's the only way they're going to recognize God. That's the only way. So when it's all said and done, the lost, they need us, y'all. Yes, they do. In a bad way. If we go around as Christians and we have God with us, we have His Spirit, we accept it, we believe, we confess He's in our heart, we have not made well, but we go around just like everybody else, What's going to happen? They're not going to see him. And there's that possibility, you know, that when they do leave this earth, when they do transition, they won't see him. And there's nothing scarier than that in the entire world. Yes. Forget, you know, whatever you think, losing all your money, losing, just to know that you live your entire life and then just to, when you go, you say, I don't have Jesus Christ. Why? A lot of people don't have Jesus Christ because we're a lot of us are lazy. Huh. I'm sorry if it, if it, if it hurt anybody's feelings. Or if it, a lot of we don't do what we need to do. We don't do what we can do. It's just make a difference with Jesus Christ. Okay. We put a lot of energy and effort and stuff that really doesn't matter at all. Mm. I can see how long I mean, an hour I played a video game that the amount isn't nothing. nothing. How many, I mean, I love the saints, I know we love, how many hours did I sit in front of a TV looking at grown men play a game? <laughs> how many years, and how many years would eventually go away? <laughs> yes. Yes, well, I'm doing it in my, uh, uh, is anybody saying the good deeds? How many times have I climbed fun and roll on the Giants and all that kind of stuff, just for the sake? <laughs> But there's bigger issues going on. Really, if I care about, the only thing that matters is what we do for God. No matter what I do, you know, when it stands for the judgment throne of Christ, all, all of the work is in front of the fire. Only what I did to glorify his kingdom and make his kingdom will just be left over. Everything else, Scripture said, I was just standing there looking like, wow, all this stuff, it just went to nothing. He said, Lua, Lua, we were just looking regret, like, I live 90 years and I only have 10 years worth of work. Mm. Oh, I live 105 years and I only have 5 years worth of work. No. And this is all Jesus has to give me just a handful of rewards. Look at all the time I wasted. Mm. This, is, this is Christian art I listen to, Andy Menio. He says, You can't stop me. And it says, Only two things we do in life we either make moves or we make excuses. Why didn't I get it done? Why, why didn't it happen? Why didn't I pass that test? Why am I not growing spiritual? Why am I not moving? Why am I not being blessed? Are you making the moves? Are you making excuses why you didn't make the moves? Come on. Come on. Why are people coming to church? Why are the lost men saved? Why did it? I don't know why. You tell me. Hey, but here it is. Here it is. As we come full circle, right? Because we get ready to close. Uh, we get ready to get out of here and fellowship and love on everybody here. But here's our problem. We were we were agreed with a problem, right? Yes. Okay? Four squared times ten. The product of that plus fourteen divided by two. Minus ten minus three squared, right? Everybody should have gotten one eighteen. Okay, you got one eighteen. But this is my life now, okay? Life is a problem. 
And as we continue to go through school, as we continue to go through life, the problems get more and more complicated. Y'all agree with that? Yes. You know, as a Christian, you might grow, you might figure out, okay, I got over that hump. But then watch out because a month later, here comes another hump. Yeah. And then six months later, it's like, oh, I can look back. Oh, here comes an even uh -huh. bigger challenge, another hump. Yeah. And then a year down the road, you're looking back like, thank God I made it through. But then here comes maybe the biggest storm of your entire life. Like, Jesus Christ, how in the world am I going to make it through this situation? And you, but you get to forget that you made it through the last three or four situations. You, you're so caught up in the fact that you look at a problem dead in your face that you don't realize, like, well, I made it through all that other stuff. So the same guy that helped me make it through that stuff, it'll be the same guy that made me make it through this stuff. So if we did it before, he'll do it again. And we should know that. Come on now. But this is the way the problem up. But but then in our situation today, our, our, as we got it going, we started to set it up. We had a problem. It was life, right? Yes. But then we had some steps. We had some steps. So Jesus Christ is the word. He left us with basic instructions before leaving earth. So we had steps on our problem. We understood that Pim dies. Uh, please excuse my dear aunt Sally. Oh, I had the steps to figure out the problem. I know exactly what to do now. When she says this, I know to say no. Because according to the steps, I'm supposed to honor and love my wife. Okay, when he does this, I have the strength to say no. Because according to the instructions, I'm not supposed to do this and honor my husband. Come on. When they offer me X, Y, Z, I know to say no. Because according to the instructions, I'm not supposed to do that. Because I make a wrong step, I'm end up in the wrong place. Uh, when this situation feels like I really just can't take it, it's where it's bearing me down. According to the instructions, I know that I have a God who loves me and that there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. So as long as I follow the instructions, I know I can get the answer. I know I get the 118. But just in case I have a hard time with the problem and I cannot follow the instructions, this stuff just gets in the way. I'm so glad I can use a cat right now. Just if, if I need a little help, Jesus Christ, let me just punch this in because I can't handle it myself. Because I got distracted with the problem. Mm -hmm. I got caught up with the, the steps. I might have missed the step. I might have forgot a step. But I just know I can just say Jesus. Jesus. And just like that, okay, that calculator is appeared. I can just punch it in and I got my solution. Just like that. I am just so glad that I serve a God who cares enough for me and for all of us that he is with me at all times. Mm -hmm. At any given time, I know like those staples commercials, I could just press the easy button. Come on, come on. At any given time, this situation gets so tough, God, I will make it. You know, but just, just, just Jesus, and all of a sudden, a big red easy button just, just like that. I can press my calculator. I have to go through what seven, eight, nine, and where's the square? You know, sometimes you can't have square buttons in the wrong place. Yeah. And how do I do this? But just press the easy button. It's about calling Jesus Christ. Yes. It's just like that. It's just something that just goes on inside of me, and I know I can make it. Because I have Emmanuel, who is God with, with me. This is personal, right? Because, yeah, this is a problem we just have for an example, but my problem does not look like your problem. Come on, brother. And your problem doesn't look like my problem. And some of them have more problems than the rest of us, but it's also to know we got problems. But it's also to know we still have to answer. That answer is Jesus Christ. And as long as we realize that, we're we good. No matter what test the enemy tries to put before us, no matter what problem, as long as we know, we recognize, and here's the a, here's a key part, we have to acknowledge the fact we have to calculate. Because sometimes, we get ready to go, sometimes we get this problem, it's like, oh my goodness, you get so caught up in a problem, you forget you got an answer. Ooh, I don't know. Just so, you're just so busy, like, good, I'm supposed, to get, I'm supposed to get from this step to this step. The problem is so big, it's just like a huge mountain. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. You're so focused on the problem, you fail to remember you have a solution. Come on. Come on. You already have the God with all the power in the world. Jesus. And he's waiting on you just to go ahead and just use him. You know, sometimes he's waiting on a phone call. Yeah, bro. Sometimes you know you can help somebody and you know they need help. Mm. You say, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for them to call me. They ain't gonna call them. They need my help. Now, God ain't going anywhere. And He's not going anywhere. 
He's with us, right? All right, bro. You made well. He's just waiting us to say, Jesus, I just need him. Help. Guide me. Use me. What does your word say? Let me use your spirit. Let me use your steps so that I can get on this problem. I want to let you know today that Jesus Christ wants each and every one of us to be victorious. Yes. Because as we're victorious, he's victorious. And the whole world can just see him glorified. And that's the entire point. Yes. So my question to you today is, are you ready to go and use your calculator? Yes. yes. Are you ready to use your calculator? Yes. Are you ready to go and be the light? Are you ready to just really just take this word and use it? And I want to declare and decree today, I'm not a prophet, never have claim to be, but I just believe that each and every one of us here who has a problem, that we will get our problem solved. Yeah, okay. I just said, your problem is already solved. It's already fixed. I believe we're going to go just do what we need to do. Acknowledge our Savior. Because God didn't put us out here just to struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. Why be a Christian? All the Christians do is struggle. Y'all think about that for a second. So I believe today all of our problems is solved. Just like that. By the name and the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's give Jesus Christ a round of applause. Let's just act like we love him. Let's just act like he is the one who fixes all our problems. Because he alone is worthy, y'all. He alone is worthy. And we just want to thank him. And we want to love him. We want to worship him. And his words will help us do that. And after that, we have a very simple confession of faith. We don't confess about people lining up, knocking the doors down, and this and the other, being rich, and all that kind of stuff. We just want to know that the fact that God's word will change us yes. and make us better people. So, if you don't mind joining me, say with some spirit the fact that God's word will make me wiser. God's word will make me stronger. And God's word will make me better. Come on, keep God.